Oh my god. Miss Pepper. What are you doing, baby? Hmm? Ma'am? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's good stuff. Pepper! I love you. <laughs> Your eyes match the table, baby. so real with y'all because I frankly don't know how to gracefully say this. I am having a very bad art time. I've been having a very bad art time and it sucks. I'm at this point now where every time I sit down to sketch, I sit down to paint, I sit down to do anything related to like visual arts, I am filled with dread and it feels like pulling teeth and I don't like anything that I make. It just sucks. Um, I've been feeling like this for a while now. Uh, I've been so locked into my fiber stuff. I've been so locked into my knitting and crochet um, because <laughs> it does not come with the same fear of failure that my like visual art does because with knitting and crochet, if I mess up on a pattern, I just frog back and I could try again. With my visual work, like with my visual art, it feels so innately tied to me that when I make something bad, it feels bad like all the way down. It just feels, it feels terrible from top to bottom. So last week I was like, okay, fine, fine. I'm gonna try to have fun if it's the last thing I do. So I basically like sat down and like decided I was gonna grumpily sketch, which is what this page is. I tried to do a little collage thing of like quilts, of like quilt stars, like that whole kind of vibe. Um, Cause I've been into like those shapes and colors lately. Collage has also kind of been speaking to me and it just sucks because this whole time I didn't want to be here. I didn't want to be in my sketchbook. I didn't want to be drawing, but I knew that it was important. And I think what is coming into very, what I'm becoming extremely aware of um, is that I am wholly lacking Hi. in an art practice. I'm realizing now why they call it a practice because it's something that you show up to every single day, whether or not it's fun. That's something that I don't have. Um, I have you. been, I'm turning 30 in like four months. Woo, 30 gang. Um, and as a result, I've just been having a lot of like introspective feelings and a little bit of a crisis and just sort of having a lot of questions read my identity and my goals and what I want to do um, with my art and my life and my career. I feel extremely listless and restless. And I think probably a lot of those feelings also comes from me just not making things regularly anymore. And so I'm trying, th this video is about me trying to overcome that feeling. I don't finish a lot of stuff. There's no like polished things to look at at the end of this. It's just me like grabbing myself by the shoulders and shaking myself and being like, we're going to make art and we're gonna have fun, God damn it. So <laughs> at least that's, that's what it feels like for me mentally. And I have been, oh, it, it, it's been a time. I'll tell you what. And as I've been struggling with this and as I've been searching for some kind of guidance, uh, I, I do really want to take a moment to thank the sponsor for this video, 
Skillshare because they've been a grand help. Skillshare is the largest online learning community for creatives with thousands of classes led by industry professionals across fields like film, illustration, design, crafting, so much more. I've been listening to a lot of creative pep talk lately and I figured it was time, it was high time for me to retake Andy's Skillshare class on unlocking your creative identity. I have taken this class in the past and I have recommended it before and I will recommend it again because Andy is brilliant and his little ADHD heart speaks directly to mine. Uh, it's, it's a phenomenal course. Skillshare also has these brand new learning paths, which are handpicked collections of classes that are designed to be taken in order with lessons that build upon one another. And I was looking through them and I found this one about creative productivity. And as I was scrolling through all the courses, I saw that the last one is taught by Lauren Hom, who I have followed on Instagram for years. I am really excited to continue taking this course of hers on passion projects, even though, you know, I don't have any hardcore passion projects on the horizon. I think a lot of the stuff she talks about is still super applicable to the stuff I'm dealing with. And in her lesson on building a roadmap, she draws out this worksheet with like different questions to ask yourself when deciding on a project. And she poses the question, what are you creatively craving right now? I was like, oh, that's the word I'm looking for. <laughs> and now I'm very excited to journal all about it and figure out and figure out exactly what it is that I've been craving in my creative practice or in my creative work, period. In this fresh new year, there is no better time to explore your creativity uh, in whatever form that may take. And if you wanna join me on this funky little journey, the first 500 people to use my link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. So please go forth, check it out, and let's make some stuff. I feel like I talk so often about my frustrations with my art practice. It is, but it's something that is pretty much always on my mind, especially right now. So it's very hard for me to not talk about it. Like I said, I'm turning 30 in June um, and I'm, I'm genuinely very stoked to be 30 because all I've heard about your 30s is that they're, you really kind of settle in to yourself. And I think that's why this current period of listlessness and aimlessness with my work feels acutely bad because I thought that I would have figured this out by now, <laughs> or at least I would have gotten a better idea of where I was headed by now. But I don't, like I'm not running my online store anymore. Um, so I don't have kind of like shop updates to like keep me on track or like to work towards. I have my Patreon where I do monthly postcards. So like I do have that as a bit of a benchmark. I'm trying to get back into streaming. I'm trying to do YouTube more regularly. And I just have, <laughs> I have too many things that I want to do. And as a result, I don't do any of them. And as a result, I've just felt I feel like I've been so disconnected from my art practice or my making lately 
And I think that a big reason for that, honestly, has to do with the fact that I am really missing my studio. I'm really lamenting the loss of my studio. Oh, girls, girls. Because, for instance, <laughs> when I was at my studio, I wouldn't get distracted by the cats, I wouldn't get distracted by my computer, I wouldn't get distracted by video games. It was much easier to just like have this big desk in the center of that studio where I could just make. I could just make stuff and it, it felt like, again, it, it was a dedicated, it was a dedicated space for it, it was a dedicated time for it, and I feel like now my days have become so amorphous and so without any kind of structure. And when I was thinking about this last week, I was like, okay, well, I can't afford to get a studio right now, and I'm I'm staying in this apartment for another year. So how do I how do how do how do I compromise? And I was so happy that I found this old easel because painting vertically makes such a huge difference. Like, oh my God, it makes it so much easier to paint. It's so much just easier on my back and it's nice to be able to like watch TV while I do it. I had this giant canvas drop cloth that was like huge. It like covers my entire living room floor and I never brought it out because it was so big and so cumbersome. And so I was like, why don't I just cut out a corner of it? So I cut out a corner of it that I could now very easily, I fold it and I put it underneath like my little TV stand. And so now I can just pull it out and lay it down over my carpet and I move my little coffee table over and then I can set up my easel. And it's actually a very nice little space. It's very, it's very, uh, the light from the windows is nice. And um, being able to just kind of spread out my supplies on the floor because I don't have to worry about it getting on my carpet because of the drop cloth is nice. And I think what I'm realizing is that the big thing that I loved about my studio is that it completely or it almost eliminated any friction between me wanting to make art and then me making art. And I feel like I have a lot more friction now <laughs> between the like impulse to make something and then actually making it. And so uh, I, I'm planning on actually bringing up my big desk that I used to have in my studio and I'm gonna be replacing my dining table with it. Um, so I do have a place to like really spread out because my computer desk where I spend all my time, unfortunately is not great for like really setting up like painting and stuff on. Um, and it's also very hard to film when I'm painting at my desk, quite frankly. I'm just, I'm trying so hard to have fun. I'm trying so hard to have fun with my art. And I feel like if my art artistic output was not both tied very closely to my identity as a person, but also tied intimately with the way that I am able to support myself financially, perhaps it wouldn't be causing me so much grief. But as a result, it takes up all of my brain space and it's all I think about. It's all I think about. And so, I think that maybe now with the looming of my 30th birthday, I'm like, okay, I know that I don't need to have everything figured out by then, but I think that by the time I turn 30, I would like to at least have a general idea of where I'm going. I would like to have, I would like to know what road I'm walking down. Do you know what I mean? I will say that while working on this little like wood panel painting, the whole time I was like, God, this is so boring. Oh, this painting is so boring and I don't like it but I was still able to enjoy the process of actually painting it, which is really nice. And that's not a feeling that I am accustomed to because normally when I don't like something that I'm working on, I pretty much just immediately stop and try to do something else. And kind of, even though I didn't finish the painting, um, it's gonna stay unfinished. Making a full thing felt nice, even though I was bored by the piece I was enjoying the minutia of it, which was lovely. I've also decided to try out clay because I've been, I was watching Megan Wang. Hi, Megan, I love you. I was watching her most recent sketchbook tour video and how she was talking about that working in a different medium is great for when you're in an art rut because it can just kind of, you know, it, it gets your brain working in a different way. And I was actually invited to be a part of the cluster show at Gallery Nucleus in Portland. I don't know why. I, every, every time I'm invited to do anything with my art, I'm like, hello? <laughs> why? Why me? Um, that's imposter syndrome for you. But 
uh, I've been agonizing. I, I basically I have to paint this little wooden mushroom, and I've been agonizing over what to do about it. And one night, as I was playing Persona Three, because Persona Three Reload just came out. I was feeling, again, this just like restless thing of being like, God, I want to make something. I want to make something. And so I grabbed some air dry clay that I have lying around and I just started squishing it and making it into little shapes. And I made a little dude. Um, and I liked the way that that little dude looked so much that I was like, why don't I put him on my mushroom? And then I decided to make a second little dude that is going to lie on top of the mushroom. And you will be seeing them in a bit after I do these little hearts. But uh, I had a lot of fun making, I had a lot of fun working with clay. Normally I don't like working with clay, um, like on this small of a scale because it's so fiddly. And also my nails are just long enough that they kind of keep getting in the way. But again, I was surprised. I surprised myself in like being able to just enjoy playing with clay. And I think it's because it's something that I like, it's something that I just don't do very often. Um, it's not a medium that I'm familiar with. See, there's, there's like one little guy and then I'm going to be making a, another little dude. This is all to say that, um, I am, I'm, it's, oh, I never, I, I never know how to talk about this gracefully and I never know how to talk about it in different ways because I talk about it, I feel like in every other YouTube video that I make, but because I have so many different things that I want to do. I want to do YouTube. I want to stream. I want to do uh, pottery. I want to do all of these other things. I, I've, I constantly spread myself too thin. Um, and so as a result, I don't have any energy left to think about my like longer term goals or like the general direction that I want to take my art. I've toyed around with like, do I want to get into Kidlet? Do I want to open up my stationery store again? Because I've started using a Hobonichi Teco. I've been having a lot of fun with it. And I'm like, oh, do I want to start making stickers again? I don't know. And it's also this thing of being like, I, I can imagine what um, other people would be really happy with me doing, but would I be happy doing it? And I'm, I'm just once again faced with the question of like, what do I want to do? What do I want to do? And I don't know. I don't know. And I don't have like a solid answer, but I think in the meantime, I'm just going to try to allow myself to follow my curiosity and not get bogged down so much in the specifics. And I'm, I'm, I, I'm, my main goal right now is to try to relearn how to have fun with my art. I'm very happy with this little mushroom guy. I think that he turned out so cute, but that's all I have for you. I just wanted to, I just wanted to share <laughs> what's been on my mind. Oh boy. Um, so I'm just going to keep, I'm just going to keep making this little, I'm just going to keep making stuff and I'm just going to hope that I have fun along the way. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for listening. <laughs> Thanks for sharing this space with me. Um, thank you to my patrons for being as, effervescent and generous and patient as always. I love y'all so bad. I love y'all so much. Um, I hope you're doing all right and I'll see you on the flip side. Bye. Mm -hmm.